and defects in patients with the tumors of musculoskeletal system. I would like to welcome you, and I would like to give you a very brief account about the method that uh, has already stopped being new, I suppose, for our everyday practice. So, 3D printing. So, if we analyze uh, the publications uh, of that uh, configuration, we see huge uh, interest uh, to the topic starting from 2012. In the year 2000, it was just uh, solitary uh, um, uh, um, uh, publications uh, talking about the 3D printing in general, not only in medicine and surgery. Starting from 2008 to 2008, we see the use of 3D printing technologies in uh, surgery. In uh, 1980s, there was no term like 3D printing. Uh, the technologies of stereolithography was uh, suggested uh, uh, by Charles Hall, uh, and it was patented in 1986. It's a technology of uh, layer-like uh, growing physical 3D objects from photopolymerizing composition, uh, composite, co composite material. And this technology has its own limitations, in particular the thickness of the layers that can be grown and materials that can be root, uh, that can be used. As any um, technique, it uh, evolved. And after some time, as they appeared, selective lysis sintering, and the method was essentially uh, the uh, layer, layer by layer sintering of the material uh, placed uh, layer by layer. There is a special platform, um, and uh, there is this uh, product is placed there, and with each layer, the laser sinters that material. Uh, and these materials of uh, this product has better physical parameters. It's um, it's a stronger, most it's stronger, more elastic, and there we can use considerable amount of various materials, starting from ABC plastic up to chocolate. And the most progressive and innovative technology is selective laser melting, and in this case. Uh, we can produce more complex uh, um, uh, products uh, from special powders, from metal powders using uh, mass models. And the process actually involves uh, sequential layer by layer melting of the material using a strong laser. And this melting um, it happens in the camera in the chamber with inert gas and also on the platform, which uh, goes uh, downwards, depending on how many layers are placed. Uh, and with each layer, the platform moves uh, one step down, and the thickness of the layer, thus is much uh, smaller, it's about 50 micrometers. And of course, it results in better physical um, uh, features of those models, of those products. So where we can use 3D technologies in medicine? These are modeling, virtual models of anatomy or of tumors. It's uh, surgery planning, intraop navigation, uh, meaning 3D models. And 3D printing could be used for planning and training, for uh, creation specific uh, models, physical ones. You can use them for guides or introduces. Uh, for, for some resections and 3D implants per se, and the field of their use is very wide, starting from orthopedics up to cardiovascular surgery. Moreover, uh, more and more uh, tissue engineering is used when they use live grown tissues, and here this technology uh, is actually reminds us of any uh, science fiction movies. Then let's look about uh, potential fields of use for 3D printing tec uh, uh, techniques. Currently, majority of publications are related to, use, to the use for uh, surgical guides, uh, for some uh, surgical models. Percentage of implants produced is much lower, but still the numbers goes up. Uh, numbers go uh, uh, numbers go up. Uh, where it could be used, of course, uh, is uh, orthopedics is leading, uh, depending on the way where the implant can be used. Also, it could be used in uh, uh, maxillofacial surgery, head and neck tumors, and also for dental plastic interventions and for cardiovascular surgery. Uh, also, uh, we do not talk about if it is advisable. Uh, to use this technology. Currently, uh, the te te technologies are developed to optimize it. 
to make it cheaper. Many uh, facilities uh, uh, obtain, uh, so to say, domestic use or household use um, appliances we uh, can uh, rapidly uh, in pre op setting plan reconstruction uh, using special 3D models. And uh, there are pharmacoeconomic studies showing that we don't need uh, industrial 3D printers. It's quite sufficient to use, uh, uh, um, uh, so to say, uh, household uh, 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 printers. And young specialists usually involved in development of the um, mass model. And the only one technician is sufficient uh, to maintain uh, this, the work of the 3D printer, it uh, makes uh, production of those models much cheaper and it also cheapens the surgery per se because due to the pre-op planning, the surgery goes faster, uh, it, more, uh, it tends to be more accurate and implantation becomes more uh, um, accessible. So we have technologies which helps us to implement the most uh, bold ideas. And if you look at the technologies, at this technology, we will see the whole range of uh, printed uh, products, starting from the small uh, bones uh, of the hand, uh, palm, and forearm, up to the huge resection of acetabular area and pelvic resection. And I would like to say, uh, to add to that, this is a person whom I mentioned in my talk. It is uh, Moshe Shine, and his uh, publication, uh, Common Sense of Abdominal in Abdominal Surgery. Uh, but uh, any surgery should uh, use some common sense. And here we see uh, wide use of 3D printing, and not always with proper indications. And we should remember about that, and sometimes we should stop. Uh, and not do, uh, uh, not do, so to say, um, procedures for procedures, uh, for the sake of procedures. So, how is the pro what is the algorithm? First, uh, we uh, go from design to the product. Uh, of course, we need to obtain scans with uh, a slice uh, thickness not more than one millimeter, and uh, an, a virtual anatomic model is produced with uh, a manual bone segmentation to d to develop for the um, approach and plan the model. Uh, within the MDT, we plan the resection, and then the model is uh, of plant implant is produced. How it looks like? Yeah, of course, it's a futuristic uh, frames from the lab uh, when this product is uh, produced. And uh, here I would be quite brief. I would like to show you the video. I hope you can see it. So this is a lab. This is a system for selective laser melting. That's an idea. It could be, uh, it could be absolutely incredible. Here you can see it on this video, and you can see how a potent laser works. This is the first uh, uh, layers of the titanium uh, powder. These uh, products are produced from various titanium uh, um, uh, alloys, um, and then in a layer by layer, we, um, so to say, we melt uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, powder. The next, uh, then the next powder layer is uh, uh, placed, and uh, was, uh, which followed with the uh, next uh, melting cycle. So there are multiple cycles of melting, resulting in production uh, of the final uh, product. Then the uh, um, uh, then the powder, unused powder, is removed to, to be reused. Uh, you can see the uh, final product, which is uh, then removed from the chamber, which is taken away from the chamber, and then, uh, and then the product is uh, uh, thermally processed, which uh, decreases the internal tension in the metal and uh, provides uh, the final product with better physical um, parameters. So after, uh, after thermal processing, 
the uh, product undergoes uh, final processes. We see uh, the uh, final, so to say, uh, product is ready. It's uh, cooked, if you wish. You see how nice it looks like. And then, and then it goes final polishing, removing all uh, um, unnecessary pieces, which is a very uh, thorough and tedious process and technically quite complicated. So from design to the product. After the development of the model, we do printing. Uh, and finally, we have an individual implant um, which was produced according to the patient anthropometry. But it's a quite a complex and creative process. Not always our um, expectations are similar to the final result. It's good to talk about the fantastic functional results, but it's not always the case. And we should understand that this creativity starts from the paper when we uh, um, uh, rework primary models and add up, uh, them with something new. And our own, uh, so to say, developments are evolved. Uh, and it's a unique uh, and uh, quite creative process, providing better um, uh, functional result. We already have, uh, uh, we have a third generation uh, of, uh, um, of, the, uh, of the wrist joint. We can pro produce it because we're waiting for the patent. Also, we could produce various guides, which makes helps us to do uh, more accurate resections for further uh, implants. And why do we need it, for instance? For instance, it's a Honda Sarcoma G2 with massive involvement of the pubic, uh, pubic bone, uh, leg bone, and other, uh, uh, other bones, which required uh, quite large uh, resection. And after planning and development of the implant, the surgery was done. You see the functional result in post period is not that impressive, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the patient underwent uh, quite considerable resection uh, with uh, uh, reconstruction surgery. And in any case, it gives us good hopes for good perspectives for the use of this technology. And of course, it would be great if everything is fine, but we should, for, should remember about uh, potential infection uh, complications, which are not related directly to the use of 3D printing, but they're related to, uh, so to say, uh, quite uh, major large surgeries. Uh, for, we already heard the talk about the maintenance therapy, and in this case, we managed to avoid re-implantation. We do remember about um, implant uh, dislocations and various complications causing that. And uh, of course, the objective, our objective is to uh, retain uh, um, or spare uh, human tissues, in particular hip joint, and the regards of fibroblastic or sarcoma of the leg bone after neodivan therapy. The resection was done, uh, sparing the hip joint, and then uh, and then we used the printing implant. It's quite nice uh, X-rays, as we can see, but functional result is most interesting. That's the first week post-op. Patient uh, walks along the uh, passage um, uh, using, uh, so to say, walking aids, and the first results also was, or crutches, uh, the first results was also fine. But also would like to say, not everything depends on the model. A lot depends on the functional status, on tissues we leave uh, uh, post-resection, which uh, actually might forecast functional result. Here we got a very good functional result in the post period because uh, we restored, uh, we spared all the neurological structures and sufficient uh, muscle framework so patient can walk normally and uh, uh, can uh, walk normally and start to work further on. What could be our future? Maybe industrial 3D printers would be replaced by home-based printers. It's rather hard to forecast, but these technologies develop so rapidly and so fast that it makes possible for us to be quite creative with regard to uh, uh, processes and replacement of defects, uh, which is a great use for our uh, medical practice. I would like to thank all our uh, listeners and participants as a supposed of our session. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, again, 